Good afternoon, everyone. I'm standing outside the front of Wimbledon train station. It's that time of the year. Uh, Sinead here with Free Tours by Foot London. I've been meaning to do this video for a very long time. I wanted to show you around my actual neighborhood and where I live, and where I shop, where I eat, where I drink, when I'm outside of central London. The beauty of Wimbledon, where we are today, is it's this gorgeous little village feel outside of central London, yet you're only 20 minutes away on the circular district line. Let's have a look around some of the shops, the restaurants, the theatres, the bars, but also thousands of fans will be descending on this area in the next week or so for the biggest tennis tournament of the year. Coming up, the beautiful Wimbledon town and Wimbledon village. So as you can see, I was just standing outside uh, Wimbledon train station. Now it's got national rail services. It'll take you all the way out to Luton Airport and you can head on several train journeys outside of London, but you also have the underground that runs from here, the circle line and the district line and the tram line. So it's only 20 minutes from Wimbledon into central London, yet you could literally feel like you're in the British countryside. It's a fabulous feel because it's surrounded by beautiful parks of Wimbledon Common and Wimbledon Park but it's also got a lovely homely vibe and a beautiful community. Now there are two sections right now I'm in Wimbledon town and I think it warrants its entire own video but this will give you an idea there are so many shops bars theaters wonderful restaurants you have such an amazing choice of restaurants down here as well there's the standard Waitrose, which is like a beautiful upmarket supermarket. It's a rather affluent neighborhood, Wimbledon folks. And uh, it has attracted celebrities, many, many thousands of celebrities over the year. Now, this is the busier section. People that live here in the Wimbledon village, particularly, are the likes of Simon Cowell, uh, has moved here recently. The schools are excellent here. You also have the likes of Davina McCall, she's a TV presenter here, Oliver Reed many, many moons ago, um, Boris Becker, as uh, his connections, of course, with Wimbledon Tennis Museum, which we'll be speaking about later on. But in order for you, if you're heading to the tennis this year, it's a ticket that's always evaded me. But I am thinking about actually queuing up this year to see if I can get my hands on a ticket and that facility is available to you so if I do that on the day I'll show you exactly how you do the queuing for Wimbledon tennis but tennis fever is hit uh, let me show you some of the shop fronts there as I said thousands of people will be descending from all over the world for one of the most famous tennis tournaments of the year now I'm a huge fan of tennis and I have been to the US Open, I think it was like seven times. I got a ticket for the French Open. Australia's a little far for me, but Wimbledon is the one that has always evaded me. Um, buying your tickets, I enter the lottery every year to no avail, but I certainly have been researching how you would queue to get to the tournament. But first, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head this direction and we're heading up to the top where you have the beautiful, quaint Wimbledon village. Now, this is a massive favorite of mine, Maureen's, and my mom when she comes visiting, because we love to do a bit of thrift shopping up here. The charity shops are absolutely amazing up here. But it's so much to see and do. I mean, you could spend the whole day. So um, I will, as I say, hopefully film a little bit more around the time of the tournament as well but everybody kind of tends to get in the spirit. But isn't it gorgeous down here already? And the architecture of the buildings as well are just magnificent. Now that is an amazing place. So in order to get to Wimbledon Village, we're going up to the top of the hill. And because I have a lot of filming to do today for you guys, I'm actually gonna be a bit lazy. I'm gonna take a bus up. That will save me a bit of time. You see the tennis balls, they all that's a Vietnamese street food restaurant that one is very good as well everybody tends to get in the spirit here of Wimbledon now let's give you an idea of what the properties are on offer 
Offers of over four million for this one. Wingworth Wimbledon are delighted to present this spectacular seven bedroom family home situated on a private road. Some of the most magnificent properties are up here in Wimbledon, ladies and gents. Not difficult to see why it's a favorite place for celebrities to live. I guess it's uh, a bit busier, but the village, I'm so excited to show it to you. And that's up here at the top of the town. And I'm gonna recommend some of my favorite places to eat, to shop, and more importantly, we're gonna see the park and we're gonna have a look around and see if I can find there's an incredible Buddhist museum Buddhist temple up here, which is really bizarre. That's where we're headed, up Wimbledon Hill, you guys. And next up, the village. So that little short journey now brings us up into a whole other part of Wimbledon and this is probably one of the most desired addresses in London. This is the stunning Wimbledon village and I think it's because it reminds me so much of that lovely little local living in Killarney that we have and these beautiful stores. Now of course they're all preparing their shop fronts to celebrate the Wimbledon tennis tournament but this is where I love to come to shop you guys especially the charity stores. Now, as it's a rather affluent neighborhood, you always get some amazing bargains. There's one charity short store around here, and I will point it out to you later on, where you can often find Joseph and Louis Vuitton and Prada and Gucci and incredible finds in some of them. Now, one of them up here, I absolutely adore. I'm gonna show you this one. Every time I come in here, I do really well. This, is St. Raphael's, the hospice for Wimbledon. They have some amazing stuff, but they've all, I'll be coming back to have a little shop again later. They're all preparing for the final. So we're gonna keep going. Let me show you a few more. Now this is Gail's Bakery, you guys. This place has the best pastries in London. Gail's has fresh breads and fruit. Gorgeous, delicious carbs and they do fabulous spinach pies gorgeous fresh breads and the smell that comes out of there is always so absolutely delicious let me just show you some of that just give you an idea of the type of things on offer look at the pistachio lemon and rose cake blueberry and custard brioche just lush it's just some of the treats on offer they do wonderful salads and juices and a great cup of coffee, you guys. Look at her beautiful flowers. Everything hydrangea made to order. My favorite at this time of the year, of course, is sunflowers. Now there's another one of those charity short stores, the British Red Cross. These places are just epic. Another one across the road is Oxfam. Now, there is a gorgeous little antique store up here, but you could spend hours and hours and end in there. So this is Chambers Bespoke Tailors. They did a wonderful job there with their front entrance. Yes, yeah, so tennis fever is striking now, lads. Cannot wait for it. Love a good tennis. The Thai restaurants are doing really well. Look at this. Now, as you turn the corner around here, there's a couple more of them. There's the Cancer Research one. That's another great one for charity finds and we will see the sign up here promoting the tennis tournament now you have a beautiful indian restaurant over there the Raj, rajdut tandoori restaurant and the very famous ivy restaurant folks one of many ivies now in london there's one in soho but the original ivy of course is in covent garden it's a huge celebrity haunt as well that magnificent building that's inside here. I was hoping we'd run into a celebrity along the way, but we'll see. Aspel Cider there, advertising 
again, all the tennis balls. So it really is great because you're getting a buzz of the atmosphere of what's about to come. And this area will be packed with people eating and drinking for the incredible tennis tournament. Let's get around this chap here. And we're heading straight around down to show you my favorite tar charity shop of them all, which is pretty special. Oh, I love this. This is great. I have to show you this. So this is dog grooming. And I love the, uh, you cannot be serious. That's the uh, famous line by John McEnroe, of course. He used that all the time. He used to fight with the umpires, if you all remember. <laughs> he was, at the time, the most controversial man in sport. Oh, a butchery. So you see everybody gets involved for the biggest tournament of the year. But even if the tennis wasn't on, you guys, this is such a wonderful place to hang out. But this is the charity story I was telling you about. Absolutely love this one. Okay, so that's matches of fashion. The other one is, and I cannot be up here without popping in for a quick minute. I'll show it to you now. It's the inside of Woodcock House. Inside in a muse. Seems to be under renovation presently. It's another estate agent, if you're on the market, folks. It would be the dream. Oh my God, look at him. We will miss you so much, Roger Federer. We'll miss you terribly. And this is the one I truly love. This is Mary's living and giving shop, and she always has the best stuff inside here not always very cheap but you can get amazing bargains closed on Monday of course so not to worry but I've got some I mean amazing labels in there Maureen recently bought a just a stunning Joseph dress in there and you would see Givenchy they occasionally have Versace They're always a great little bargain and just a stone's throw away, just this beautiful wild open space. Now, as I said, we can do separate videos. I'm going to do a separate one on Wimbledon Town for you. And I think I'm going to do one on Wimbledon Common up here because there are some amazing parts of the Common that I want to take you on a journey through. Look at these homes, guys, at the right of the back of the common. I mean, some of these are just exquisite. This is your Wimbledon common. So right now I'm only showing you one small section of Hutney, Wimbledon and Kingston upon Thames Common. It covers over 1,140 acres in total. And this is literally just a, around the corner from Wimbledon Village. And I mean, it's an oasis where you feel like you're in the British countryside in central London. I mean, the dream of having one of these houses up here, ladies and gents, that would be the ultimate. Some of them are just magnificent. You'll see there through the trees, one beautiful home overlooking the common. But a wonderful place to get away from the world. Now, this is only just a brief look at the common area but next I want to take you down to just one of the most spectacular buildings in this area. So in order to get to our next destination we're just going to double back where we were and be finishing up today. Oh, it's so lovely and peaceful up here, so quiet, very chilled, everyone's very relaxed. No wonder they are living in their mansions. The green around the back, most likely a pool out in the back gardens. It'd be hilarious if we ran into Simon Cowell up here. He, I'm manifesting. Simon, if you ever end up watching this, Please give us a retweet. So, and I hope you're a fan of the videos. 
I won't sing for you, I promise. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Look at the rose and crown, guys. I mean, just so pretty. Everything about this area is amazing. So just a little bit there about the Rose and Crown. It's one of Wimbledon's oldest public houses, dating from the early 17th century. It was a starting point for stagecoaches to London. The Victorian poets Leah Hunt and Algernon Swinburne often met here. And it was the Evening Standard 1970s Pub of the Year. Let's give you an idea of what's on offer in there. Bowls of mixed olives, spring pea and ham hock soup, beautiful meals, classic burgers, plant burger option, haddock and triple cooked chips, pork and ale sausages and sirloin steak. I guess they're gearing up for the big event. I'm sure they do very well here. Um, this is where you would come as well for beautiful roast lunches in London. And that's a video I'm kind of entertaining at the moment because people are always asking me where's the best roast dinner in London. I have one particular one I'm very happy with. And that is an Irish place not far from here either and I will take you there someday. My favourite Irish pub in London. Now we're taking a little stroll along here. This is Marriott Road. And we're going to head down little back streets but let's have a look at some of these beautiful homes along the way it's not difficult to see why it's one of the most desired neighborhoods in London a lot of public schools up here as well and just for your reference public in this country is private folks state schools are the public schools that's an address I'll be looking up it's a short little journey up here I mean, how beautiful. This is too much. I am green with envy. It's hard to imagine that you're actually even in London. It's pretty special and unique up here, folks. This home tells us that Lionel Tertus, 1876 and 1975, a viola soloist. Soloist lived in this house in a flat here between 1961 to 1975, it says. Wow. Now I'm right in the centre of the road. Look at that view, you guys. Oh my God. You can see the London Eye, you can see the Shard, as far as Wembley Stadium. How incredible is that? I'm right up here on top of the hill, as you can see here. Just breathtaking. So I'm taking a little stroll downhill and we're going to take a left up here. I know this is a little bit, <laughs> seems a bit crazy. But it's going to be all worth it. You wait and see. Just get a bit worried about that ominous black cloud over my head. And the wind is building. I hope we're not in for a massive rain shower. But if we are, we're going to be in an amazing place to get some shelter. Now, just to the bottom of the hill, we've arrived here at Colone Road. And we're going to take a little adventure right up here. And this is where we're headed down. If you ever heard the expression, was it ever as inappropriate as this one? Stunning. And this is precisely what we came to see. Now we are heading inside this amazing place in the middle of Wimbledon in London. Stay tuned, you're not going to want to miss this. This is the gated entrance to this incredible Buddha Padi, Padipa temple, the Buddha Padipa temple. 
It says the spring and summer, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Autumn and winter, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. The main temple opening times are Saturday and Sunday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. One day to Friday by appointment only, oh no. But you have chanting and meditation classes, all open to the public. Look at this special place, you guys. This looks like maybe a residence for perhaps some of the monks. Look what I wanted to show you here. How beautiful is this? I don't have a tank top on, but I do have... My arms are exposed because it's quite warm. Look at this. Wait till I show you what we're looking at. Oh my God. This tranquil setting. I want to live here already. Look at that, folks. In the centre of Wimbledon. Isn't that special? The Buddha Padipa, Temple of London. How incredible is that? I just wanted to take you around the grounds of the temple, you guys. I mean, the beautiful outdoor spaces here as well. Um, people come here to chant and to meditate. The spiritual home of the Buddhist community in this area. I mean, to live here would be exquisite. I'll just take you a bit further down. This caution slippery floor. Oh my days, how beautiful is this? I'm being quiet because it's very peaceful and quiet around here, so I don't want to disturb anything. Look at this. I mean, it's just paradise. And you can sense how Bit ritual in this here as well. Just remarkable. The way you go is little Buddha. Another thing for you to visit in London, Lovelace. So much on offer at Wimbledon. Beautiful. It looks like they're getting ready to have like an outdoor seating area, maybe for some food. But look at these little benches where you can just sit here and relax. No anxiety or stress or pressure in this area, folks. I think maybe we need to all change our lifestyles a little bit when you see how peacefully these beautiful people live. It really is the key, isn't it? Quiet, calm, and serene. I'm going to sit over here for a couple of minutes. And everywhere you go, you see these tiny little birds. Look at the little Buddha over here on the rock inside. Beautiful path around. Apart from the dog barking, of course. Wildlife conservation area, do not enter. Thank you. It's all about respecting the living. This. Oh my god, I'm just absolutely in awe. It's 
backdrop under these beautiful trees and canopies and everywhere you go. You should, yourself should make the effort, the awakened ones, only teachers, those who enter this path and who are meditative, are delivered for the ponds of Mara. Poetic. Look at this. So obviously it's a done thing to leave money, coppers. I will be donating to this place online. Spectacular. London, you continue to amaze me. I feel like I've intruded enough now though, folks, with filming. I feel a bit guilty about it for some reason, but I'm sure they'd be delighted with any contributions to the temple. And we will put a link online where you can donate to this wonderful community here. So the actual temple itself was opened up on the 1st of August 1966 by, and I'm hoping I get my pronunciations right, the King of Thailand, King Bum Ibol, and Queen Sikrit. The original property was in Isheen, but this property was bought by the Thai government for, I believe, 170,000. And it maintains a residence for the monks here as well, but all faiths and denominations are welcome to come and donate. And all along the path are these fabulous words of wisdom. Wisdom springs from meditation. Without meditation, wisdom wanes. Having known these two paths of progress and decline, one should so conduct oneself that wisdom may increase. Isn't that spectacular? I feel like I'm invading in the home of these birds and wildlife. They're all very comfortable in this area. Normally they fly away, but this is their domain. There's a bell there and they tend to have a lot of festivals here. The community come together and feed each other so they solely rely on donations and in the world we live in today we're such massive consumers and we buy so much garbage. Well I do, I speak for myself online. Amazons and ASOSs and those and nonsense. I think we can contribute to this beautiful, beautiful oasis. Serenity, calm and peace. This is where I certainly will be donating towards and I will be here a lot more often. So excited to share this to you and share this with you. And there's some stunning photos of this temple online. And at night time particularly, which I'm sure it looks amazing at night. Look at this. And it even looks like they have a, a stand here for music almost like a bandstand. I'm assuming they have some very lively festivals. Something I'm going to have to attend actually. An experience. Well, you outdid yourself. Put a dapita. Dapita. I'm so sorry if I got the pronunciation wrong. Right, we're heading out the gates. And next up, the Wimbledon Tennis Museum. Of course, as I'm about to leave, I find this gorgeous little garden. It looks like it's a garden of remembrance, possibly to former monks, maybe, that lived on the site. And again, the Buddhist, in memory of Avril and Terence Cox. Colors are so vibrant. I must come here at night time and see it at night. Really beautiful. Now it's all written in Thai, but I'm assuming 
that's what that is, a memorial possibly to the monks that used to live here. Here's one of John Harrison, dedicated to forever a blues fan and a city fan. <laughs> Bless him, he'd have been delighted with their winning the Champion League, John. Rest in peace. Well, I'm making my way, my way back down, but I needed to tell you this, folks. I was just passing and I got chatting to this wonderful lady who was sweeping her beautiful home and the drive of her beautiful home and it's fascinating the people that we meet, you meet she told me she was born here but when her mother when the blitz hit her mother picked up the six children and attempted to get home to Ireland out of harm's way she said that the humanity, she didn't even have enough for the ferry, which at the time took eight hours with six young children. This lady herself was in, basically, I think she was something like six months old. And she said to the, the ferry, the passenger ferry, that she only had one shilling. And he said, well, I think you need this fare more than the, the bus company does. And he let her on. I mean, what a beautiful story. And she moved back afterwards and has lived here on Burley Road for years and then she downsized from a beautiful five bedroom house here on Dep Burley Road to a magnificent home right beside the Buddhist temple but she also told me that Anne Novak Djokovic rents right up that road where we just were during the Wimbledon Tennis Championships and Apparently, he visited the temple every single day during the championships while he was here. So, I go stalking Novak Djokovic. <laughs> How amazing would that be? Right, so, we've done enough about the properties around here. We've done the shopping, the food. Now, let's go for the tennis, folks. So the easiest way just to show you folks, so I've made my way back into Wimbledon Village. So once you get up to Wimbledon Village, back at the Ivy, we'll use that as our center point. Then you head down this high street and you walk the whole way down. Now the alternative is you can take the 493 bus and that will be our next stop today. I'll be with you, you can say, have a 10 minute walk straight down this street. And there is a stop for the Wimbledon Tennis Museum and that's where we're gonna end up next and to visit the Tennis Museum with me just click on the link above as always thanks for watching